to the off-grid family. Today is going to be a part three of how to make a wind turbine or making a wind turbine. It's not a how-to, it's more of a follow me along on my journey. Uh, this wind turbine is the small one that's going to be connected to po possibly my shed and it's going to charge a 12 volt car battery which will then power the lights for in our garden. Today I'm going to be acquiring bits and pieces that I need. For example, if anyone watches um, my videos often, they might recognise this. This was out of the wind turbine and on it there is a couple of components that we're going to hopefully use, although they look a bit old and crusty. Um, and then this, which was also out of the old treadmill video. I'm going to cut a bit of this plastic that I need for part of it. So it's just more acquiring bits and then I'll, I'll put them together to show you how I'm thinking they're going to go together and then I'll have a big think about it and make sure before I start gluing, sticking, drilling, welding, anything together. Let's get on. First of all I'm just going to remove all of the electronics from the metal. The metal is going to be something we're, I'm, well I'm probably going to use as well for this wind turbine. But let's get it off first and then I can decide. stuck in with some sort of gunk so they're a bit harder to get out than usual oh good if you ever get a nut stuck inside any type of socket set Try your hardest to get the screw that it came on. Hang on. Then all you need to do is screw it in a little bit and then give it a pull and you got it out. Tip of the day. Okay, so that's all of the, the surface is done, and now we've got to start getting these that are off. Basically, this piece of metal is acting as a heat sink for various uh, voltage regulators and um, bridge rectifiers, etc. This one's going to be a bit awkward. If you have a look, this one's been got that glue pasty stuff on, and I'm trying to keep this, so I've got to be very careful. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of good stuff there might, we might be using soon. Um, okay, they've all got conductive paste on which can all be cleaned off and everything. But what I want to do is check the serial number of this quickly. Okay, I've done some research and this is indeed a, um, a bridge rectifier. It's from 50 to 1000 volts and it's up to 35 amps so that is ideal for what we need. So what I'm going to do in a little while is desolder that from the board and we'll try and use that one. I'll see if it's working okay. Also, I'm going to be using this as a platform to hold the motor on, but I'll have to clean all that up as well.
This is a bit I salvaged from the treadmill and I'm actually, uh, I've marked a few bits that I need to now cut off that so that's another bit of free salvage. And I'm also going to be attempting to fold this. This may go horribly wrong. Here goes nothing. Oh, the neck. Well, I gotta say, that's not a bad bend at all. I'm quite impressed with that, considering that was with brute force and a bit of intelligence. Only a bit there. this quite small caster unfortunately I looked everywhere for bits of junk I've got and I don't have any of these um, and this will be the actual thing that the the blades are on so that they can turn with the wind now what I'm hoping to do is I'm going to cut this wheel out and it's going to be this way so that basically this will be where the post is holding the wind turbine on and this will be able to freely move with the wind. Now, once I've cut this off and connected this to the post, well, before I connect it to the post, I'm hoping I can screw a hole through here because that's where I have the wires. So basically, this will have the motor connected to it with the fan blades on it. Something like this, let me show you. So it'll be something like that, and it just means that then the motor with the fans on it will be able to move freely in the wind. And this bit then is connected to the post. So, the first thing I need to do is take this wheel off. Keep that for something else. Now I want to be able to drill through this and I got a horrible feeling that either I'm not going to be able to drill through because my drill bits aren't good enough or I'm going to drill through and it's going to knacker the whole thing up. We just have to see. I'm going to go with a very, very fine one at first. Let's see how we get on.
I just sprayed a little bit of WD-40 in it just to keep it from getting a bit too hot and heavy. Let's see. My drill's dying. Take two. Nearly there. Okay, we've got a nice hole all the way through. Let's make it a little bit bigger, not by much though, because I honestly don't know how big the, the shaft is and I don't want to drill the whole thing out. First one I used was size two and this one is now a three. I'm just going to slowly increase. I'd like to make it a little bit bigger, but I am genuinely quite worried about whether whether I'm going to drill out the actual central core. I'm going to have to try it. It's not quite big enough. Now I'm on a three. I think I'll end up pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until I break it, to be honest. But at least I know its limits then. Guess what? I'm going up another size. Okay, I'm using a four now and that's it then. That's absolute maximum. I'm not going any bigger. This may be the one that breaks it, but we'll see. Don't like that. I think that'll be the bit where I'm breaking it, probably. We'll soon find out.
can't really see down it, but that's all the way through. It needs a bit of a file down there. I think I'm going to leave it there. Don't get me wrong, I am tempted to go one size bigger, but I don't think I should. I need to now clean off all the bearings because of all the bits of stuff that's gone in them. And I'll give them a bit of a spray. Yeah, you can hear that they're not happy. Right. because I'll be flicking WD-40 everywhere. Okay, I'm going to leave that for the WD-40 to do its work. These are the blades I'll be using. There's still a bit of work to do on them, but they're close to being done. These are the metal brackets I'll be using to hold the blades onto the actual motor eventually. And these are going to be something to do with how I keep the wire from actually twisting as the wind turbine spins. This is the metal bracket and a various few bits of components. I'll go into them in a bit more detail uh, in the next video. but. I've got to end this here, otherwise I won't have a chance to do the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon. Bye.